everybody. Thanks for joining our webinar today. We're going to be talking about our Lions Eyeglass Assistance Program. Um, just a little housekeeping over to the right on your screen, you have a chat function. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to put them in there. Brenda will be answering any along the way um, that might be relevant to the webinar. Um, however, if you have any questions that you want to um, ask, um, just go ahead and shoot them. And we are going to have a Q&A at the very end of the webinar. So feel free to just shoot questions to us and we'll answer them as we go or we'll get to them at the very end. Um, I just want to let you know that this is the very first webinar in a series of four that your Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation is putting on. They are going to be today, Thursday at 11, and for the next three weeks, um, we we're going to have a webinar on the ROAR program, which is our hearing aid program. We're going to have one on patient care and mission cataract, as well as a fun town hall style webinar that our executive director and um, Hank Calhoun, our board chair, will be partaking in. So please make sure that you register, check out our Facebook, check your email, click the link to register for those webinars because they are very informative and will be a lot of fun. I am Katie Torgerson. I am a certified optician and paraoptometric. I got my certification from Coffee Creek's eyeglass um, program. Kelly Asbra was my uh, teacher there. I um, was able to get my certification and was released in 2014. And here I am today. I'm the optical manager of I Promise Optical, which we will talk about briefly a little bit, but I also manage our LEAP Optical Lab. LEAP stands for the Lions Eyeglass Assistance Program. And um, I mainly what I do with the foundation is I coordinate partnerships between Lions clubs throughout the state of Oregon and their local optometrists throughout the state. So, um, and we also have Kelly um, joining us. She'll be here shortly. Um, I will give a brief introduction of Kelly, but then once she's able to pop on, um, she can give you a, um, a little quick bio about herself. But Kelly Asbra was the coordinator for um, over 15 years at Coffee Creek's Eyeglass Program. She um, is an amazing person, and um, I am just so grateful to be working for her again here um, in the real world, I call it. Um, but she, um, she'll be um, joining us today whenever she's able to. But first, I would like to talk to you about our amazing staff that we have um, in our optical program. We have Noelle Bryan, she's our office administrator. So when you call the foundation and you have questions or um, whether you're a lion or if you're a provider or just somebody in the community, when you call the foundation, Noelle, you'll hear Noelle's sweet voice. Um, Noelle, along with all of our um, other opticians, are listening in on this webinar. So if you have direct questions for them, feel free to shoot them our way. We'll make sure that we get them um, to be able to answer them if we cannot answer questions on their behalf. Uh, we also have Tracy Brown. She's our optician and our Lions Eyeglass Recycling Coordinator. She is the one that processes all of the donated eyeglasses out at the warehouse. She hosts events having Lions Clubs come out um, to sort eyeglasses that get ready for missions. She coordinates the glasses going to and from Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, which is where within that program they um, process our donated eyeglasses. So Tracy is your go-to person for eyeglass donations and requests. And then we have Sammy Pasado. She is our lead optician extraordinaire. She's amazing. Um, she's the first one, um, first optician usually that you'll get to work with out in the shop um, if you come into I Promise. And um, then we also, and she's both Tracy and Sammy and Yvette, who is our newest optician. They're all board certified opticians. We don't hire staff that aren't trained or at least certified. Opticians and Yvette, like I said, Yvette King is our newest optician. She's mainly in the lab um, making all the eyeglasses for our um, both charitable program and I Promise Optical. And we've got Kelly here. I'll let her introduce herself. Hey guys, sorry, I repel technology. I'm just not the best at it, and I kept coming in and I couldn't be here, so I'm I'm finally here. Um, 
I'm really excited. I'm sure Katie's told you that we're really excited to be part of the first Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation webinar. Um, this is a really great idea that Katie had so that we could connect with everybody uh, why we're all working remotely during these kind of really uncertain times. Um, as you got to meet Katie, she's fantastic. Couldn't ask for a better optical manager, but um, my name is Kelly Asbra. If I've never had the chance to meet you, I am the optical director at the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation. Um, I've been here for about six years now, and it seems like just yesterday I joined, it's, but that's a good thing. It's just one of those places where you've just, you're just going to be there forever. Um, I got my start in optics about 20 years ago, which makes me feel very old to say that. Um, I had the opportunity to start a program at a Coffee Creek Correctional Facility. It was an eyeglass recycling program. And for the work part of the day, all of the ladies that were incarcerated would recycle all of the eyeglasses that lions would collect all over the state of Oregon. Um, the ladies would clean them, they would repair them, calibrate them, get them ready for site missions. Um, so that's one of our other great programs that Tracy helps lead up, which we send glasses all over the world. The other part of the day, the women had the chance to take an extensive curriculum so they could become dispensing opticians and pair optometrics. Um, so the idea was when they would leave, they would have a really great skill to where they could find a livable wage career and take care of themselves and their family. And um, during the course of that program, we actually started making eyeglasses for the prison population, which was really um, a great thing because it provided consistency where we needed it and it gave the ladies an additional skill. So the lab that we have, which we're going to tell you a little bit more about, we actually modeled after Coffee Creek. So that is me in a nutshell and I'm happy I could actually be here finally with you guys. And I'm just looking at our attendees list. It's super exciting. I see we have Teddy June and Susan Fanner, Sharon Rollins, and it's super exciting. We also have Amanda Mooney joining us. She's the current coordinator of the Yay. IBOS program at Coffee Creek. So thanks for joining us, Amanda. I hope that what we share today is going to be really informative for you. Um, if you don't know anything about LEAP, we hope that we cover it. If you um, know everything about LEAP, um, we hope that you learn a little bit something more. So we're going to give a quick overview on our LEAP. Um, program. We're going to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and our response to that, um, what we are able to do from home and how we're able to continue handling requests. And then we're also going to have a little discussion about what you as um, sight and hearing chairs, as lions, as providers, what you can be doing from home um, just to maximize this time that we have. Because um, what Kelly and I have found and our, the rest of our team and staff at the foundation is that there is, um, we always say, when we have downtime, we're gonna be able to do this. We have all these little uh, back office projects that we wanted to take care of, and this is our amazing opportunity to do that. We just keep seeing the silver lining. So um, we'll share with you what we are able to do from home to continue providing the gift of sight for people and also what you can be doing. So Kelly is going to give you a little overview of uh, LEAP, and then I'm going to share with you how um, you can start working with us if you aren't already. Okay. I oh, think actually, first we were going to try to do a poll. Yeah. Do a poll. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to. We're new to all this. This is exciting. There's a poll that's oh, going to pop right up. There, there we go. <laughs> so first we want to know: um, Are you using the LEAP Optical Lab? So you could say, yes, our Lions Club loves it. Yes, I am a provider who works with the LEAP Lab. Or no. How about no, I haven't heard of it, which would make us sad, but be truthful. <laughs> or no, what is the LEAP Lab? Which we're hoping that if you click either no, I haven't, I've heard of it, or what is the LEAP Lab, that we can help you guys learn more about that today. So we'll give you a second to make your choice. So if you're one of those people that um, has heard about the LEAP Lab and you're using it, we hope that this webinar is still informative for you. If you are one that has never heard of LEAP, we hope that 
um, you get a good foundation of knowledge so that you can take it home, um, marinate on it, and then decide if you want to work with us or not, or maybe you have an idea of how you can partner partner with us in other ways. Um, so awesome. Oh, there hey. our poll result. Awesome. awesome. Let's see. We don't have any providers with us today, but we do have some lions that are using our Leap Lab. 80% of people um, of our lions on this webinar are using it. 20% um, um, are not using it, but you've heard about it. So we hope that we um, can get that 20% maybe to start using us and we could uh, better serve your Lions Club and people in your community. Definitely, and hopefully too with this um, survey, it's an opportunity, you know, you've heard of us, but it's just an all, it's always good for us to talk to you guys to tell you about the lab. Sometimes Katie and I get the really great privilege to go out and talk to club meetings. Um, and speaking of if your club's ever interested, let us know. We, we try our best. Um, sometimes if you're a little bit far away, we try to kind of parlay it and hit a couple clubs. Um, we did that over in Eastern Oregon one time. But we love to come and talk to clubs. And it's really interesting because sometimes when we get out there, people they think that we're using the recycled glasses. They, they, they've heard of Leap Lab, but they think maybe it's just the donated ones. They don't know we're actually making them. So we're hoping that we can kind of refresh everyone's memory and uh, experience with this and teach you more. Okay, so I think we're gonna go to our next slide, which is just an overview to kind of give you guys the history of Leap. And again, it's that we'll just start. So we had um, back before Oregon Health Plan used to cover people's eyeglasses and exams. This was many, many years ago, which was a really wonderful thing because people need to be able to see. Um, and adults, we we have to function as we age, our eyes start changing and we really, really need to get glasses so we can keep working and doing things. Well, then what happened was Oregon Health Plan cut off care for adults so no eye exams and glasses and when that happened the need for adults really dramatic drastically increased for our referral line calls that we get and i believe that right now on our referral line we get a few hundred calls a month for people seeking help um, like I, I need eyeglasses i need an exam um, hearing aids different things but for the the vision we get a few hundred and so what happened was we had some really great opportunities and one of them was um, VSP vouchers. And so VSP came in and VSP said, okay, we're going to go ahead and we can help you guys with these vouchers, which clubs were elated because it was a free resource where people could get that nice full comprehensive eye exam. And then they could go ahead and they could get a pair of glasses. What VSP didn't bank on was that how many the state of Oregon were going to use in the first three months. It basically, they told us overnight they had to stop that program. So that left a lot of clubs in kind of a bad place where maybe some of them stopped fundraising or they didn't actually have a lot of the funds to help people. And now they had this really big list of people. So at the foundation, the Oregon, we'll call it that, the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation, shorten it to the foundation or old shift. Um, we wanted to find a way to make this sustainable. We wanted to come up with a way where we could make eyeglasses, we could produce them, we could control the quality, the cost. Um, we would be a, a tool in the tool belt, as Katie and I like to say. We always tell clubs that they don't have to work with us, we just wanna be a resource in your toolbox. But we wanted to do something. So we started looking at the site first grant, which was through Lions um, International. And Nicole Monderano, who is our fantastic grant writer that we have, applied. And it was really fun because this was one of Katie's first projects um, that she got to work on there. So Katie was just started at the foundation and she was helping Nicole and I was still at Coffee Creek and they were calling me and I got to, I got to be a content expert, which was very fancy. I felt very happy to help them. And we got this grant and to date, this is the largest grant we've ever received. It was a little over $217,000. And this grant was a two part grant. The first part was to actually open our finishing lab so that we could actually make the eyeglasses in-house. 
if you've ever been to our office, our lab is actually in the back. Um, we modeled our lab after the one at Coffee Creek. We even have one of the older edgers that they have because the idea is that um, one day as women keep coming out of Coffee Creek, we wanna have an internship program, which maybe one day Katie and I can do an awesome webinar on our dreams because we would love to tell everybody about that. But we also have the opportunity to get some new machinery um, so we started our lab and that was the first part. The second part to our grant was an, a retail shop, which we've named I Promise. We did that as a nod to Helen Keller because we are keeping the promise. I Promise is turning three. It sounds so crazy to me, but it's turning three in July. Um, I think on 7-7, seven, seven, I think that's when we launched it. We thought it was lucky, like a slot machine, like 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, so we started it then. And so the idea is that the public who can afford eyeglasses can come to I Promise and they can buy really, really fantastic eyewear. We offer anything to I Promise and all the proceeds that we make roll back into our LEAP program to help our charitable recipients. So when we designed this, what we decided to do is we made a really great eyeglass kit. It's a nice small kit. It would fit nicely in a cupboard in a doctor's office. And we put about 13 frames in there. And there's two color choices for each frame. So when the recipients for the lions go to the provider, they can try on the different pairs and they can see a picture. Katie, do you want to tell them your experience when you were helping the low income people at the practice you were working at with the eyeglasses? Yeah. Yeah. So um, once um, I got my certifications, I started looking in the optical field for work. And I was so fortunate to work for an amazing um, optometrist in Portland and uh, I loved it there the people were so great but um, the one <clears throat> downside um, was it what it was what, that I saw because there are a for-profit um, place they um, when I was instructed like we were supposed to look at the schedule and if we saw any OHP people or Medicaid or Medicare people come in um, for their exam and glasses I was supposed to uh, present them eyeglasses, not on the board, but what was covered for their insurance. And it was just a box of mangled discontinued frames because it was really inexpensive for the practice. And then um, they could recoup more um, for the insurance claim. And so I just, it didn't sit well with me to just have people dig through a box of eyeglasses. Um, so what I would do when they would, before they had come in is I'd look at the schedule and I would just try to display them a little bit nicer because um, we believe, I believe at the time that people, just because you are low income or you have, um, you know, you're on OHP or something doesn't mean you should have a lesser experience than other people. So I made sure that they were presented eyeglasses nicely and that was kind of the idea behind um, um, we wanted to make it easy for the optometrist too. We wanted people to have a small select group of frames to choose from, but something we knew that there'd be something for everybody in that kit. So we have it nicely displayed in the kit. It's nice, like Kelly said, can just slip into a cupboard and be pulled out um, conveniently when the leap people come in. And um, yeah, Katie, having that experience was a huge part of how we. Um, designed this because we didn't want anybody to feel less than or not as important as anybody else. But we also know from um, experience in talking with a lot of doctors that um, part of the longest part of this process is when they go into the dispensary and there's all these rows of glasses. And if you say to someone, you can get this, they end up down here with these $400 frames wanting to get those and it, it, it kind of delays the process. So this was just a nice way to present some really nice options. Our frames, even though they're a lower price point, come with a year warranty. It's the same as a frame that costs $500. We offer the same warranties on that. And we designed this um, to, to be really affordable for our clubs and our community partners. It's $30 for a pair of single vision. That includes a brand new frame and lenses. Um, the lenses are made out of a material called CR39, which is just a fancy term for plastic. If you want to get really fancy, it's Columbia Resin 39. It was the 39th attempt of that material, kind of like WD-40. Um, it's $40 for aligned bifocal, and it's $50 for aligned trifocal. 
and we don't charge extra for higher prescriptions. Um, sometimes you'll get a part of a prescription called cylinder and it can be kind of high. Um, some places start charging you a fee as it goes up. We don't do that for our recipients. Um, if the adult needs to be upgraded to polycarbonate lenses, which are impact resistant, um, we don't charge extra for that. And um, if sometimes, the nice thing too with working with us is we're trained in optical. Sometimes when clients work with a doctor, doctors do a lot of prescribing from the chair where they're talking to the client about their lifestyle. And someone might say, oh, I'm an avid gardener. And they say, oh, you should really consider getting a pair of polarized sunglasses. And then the person comes out and they tell their Lions Club sight and hearing chair or the community partner, oh, the doctor said, I have to have this pair of glasses. So a lot of times if we see stuff, we'll call the providers and just check if it's a suggestion or if it's an actual medical necessity. If it is, um, Katie is so good, she always will call the, the club or she will call um, the, the community partner and say, hey, this is necessary and the cost is gonna be this much more. And we just take what our cost is basically and, and pass it on to you. So it still keeps it very, very affordable. Um, when we first started this lab, we had, Katie, do you, you always do the story so good. Do you wanna tell them about Michael with the prism and the- yeah. Yeah, um, so Michael was one of our first recipients for the Leap Optical Lab, and he um, came to us, or the Lions Club came to us because his eyeglasses were going to cost like $500 at their local providers that they normally go through, and the sight and hearing chair asked if we could make them, and I was like, sure, let's see what we can do. So we looked at his prescription, and the poor guy, he has um, multiple sclerosis, so he has really bad balance issues. And um, so he needed to have uh, a line bifocal with 10 diopters of base and prism in each eye. So prism, um, what that does, you're, you're probably, I'm sure you Lions Clubs and Sight and Hearing Chairs have heard the word prism. Um, usually it's very costly when you get it done um, at a retail place. Um, but the lab that we work with doesn't charge us additional for prism. So it's, it's amazing but this guy uh, a typical prism uh, prescription for prism we see is maybe two diopters diopters is our unit of measurement that we use um two is about typical might be a little bit more a little bit less than that but this guy needed 10 diopters in both eyes which would make the lenses like super thick so um, we were able to do them in a high index lens material with prism um, he also was very, very light sensitive. He was photophobic, so he needed transition lenses. So he needed transitions, a line bifocal, and 10 diopters of base and prism in each eye. And like I said, the sight and hearing chair was quoted about $500 from his uh, local optometrist, and we were able to do them for about $100 for the club. So um, we have found that we have been able to save Lions Club a significant amount of money to date, um, since inception, we have saved Lions Club about $500,000 on eyeglasses. That's figuring that people, that Lions Clubs were paying between $75 and $150 per pair of glasses. Through getting them at the Leaf Lab, which is $30, $40, or $50, that's how we've come to that figure of savings for Lions Club. We have, um, like I said, we saved about five. Saves Lions Clubs about $500,000. And if your club is interested in, or if you're a community partner, we keep throwing out the word community partner, and I don't know if we've covered what that means. We actually work with the KCI Institute, um, their outreach program, as well as Pacific on a little bit smaller scale, but mostly um, KCI Institute. We work with Central City Concern, which is an organization that helps people that are in recovery or in transition. Um, we work with the William Temple House, which is an amazing um, service organization. They're just down the street from our foundation, and they have so many different amazing services for people, um, but they also provide eyeglasses for folks, and they're able to obtain eyeglasses through our lab at a much lower cost than they would otherwise. Um, with KCI Institute, they have this amazing van that goes out into rural areas in Oregon and provides free eye exams and they cover the cost of eyeglasses for those people. 
Um, so we make all of the eyeglasses for their efforts as well. So um, they're included in that, um, in the, amongst the organizations that are saving all the money. And if your club or organization would like to um, continue providing eyeglasses for people and do it at a much lower cost, but not sacrificing the quality, please reach out to me. Um, that's what I do. I will connect you with a local optometrist that might already be working with our LEAP lab that is in your area. Or if we don't have a provider already working with our lab in your area, we can hunt one down. I love doing that. Um, I'm, um, I have a, um, it's really fun for me to just cold call practices and say, hey, I'm Katie, and just tell them um, I like to brag about our foundation and what we do because not only do we provide sight and hearing service or vision services, we have our other amazing programs. So it's really fun to talk about what we do and um, see if they're interested in partnering with us. So I um, see myself as the person that kind of marries the Lions Club with their local optometrist in using our these optical labs. Um, so once we've established a connection between a club and their local optometrist or ophthalmologist, um, we'll send them the frame kit that we talked about. Um, it's free to the provider. Um, they'll have that frame kit. And then um, the Lions Club will just as nor just like normal, they'll send their referrals to them for the exam and um, the eyeglasses. And how it works is, so I'm just going to walk myself through as if I'm a client. So I am applying through my local Lions Club. The club approves me for eyeglasses. Um, and just so you know, as a Lions Club, you don't have, our foundation doesn't have to vet your LEAP applications. Once the sight and hearing chair approves it, they're approved and you can refer them to the local optometrist. So the client goes there, they get their exam, they get fitted for their eyeglasses, and then the provider faxes our LEAP optical lab in order. And they don't need to mail us the frames or anything because they keep that frame kit. That frame kit is just for them to the patients to try on and take measurements from. We have a stock, uh, a huge stock and supply of all of the frames in house at the foundation, as well as some um, some prescriptions we keep on stock as well, some single vision. So um, once we receive that order, we either order the lenses from uh, a surfacing lab. We could have a whole webinar on the difference between a surfacing lab and a finishing lab, which is what we have, but we do in-house edging at the foundation. So we get the lens blanks that are about this big and we edge them into the frame. Um, and then once we make the glasses, they um, are um, given a, uh, a lens cleaning cloth and they're put into a hard clamshell case and they're shipped out back to the provider. And the provider will then dispense the eyeglasses to the patient just like normal. It doesn't look any different for the client, except that they have a really nice concise frame kit to choose from in their eyeglasses. Um, the billing, I'll talk about that because that's a hot topic. The Lions Club and the provider are the ones that need to negotiate an exam fee. I kind of leave myself out of it. Um, sometimes I plug to the provider and like, hey, there are some amazing providers that give four free exams a month. I know um, our provider in Woodburn is amazing and he donates um, up to four exams a month for people. And we just got a new provider on board yesterday, um, Spectacle. Mm -hmm. They have a location in Portland and Beaverton and they are willing to provide three exams a month for Lions Club clients. So we're working out the logistics there and connecting that new provider with some Lions Clubs in the Portland area. And um, again, I just want to reiterate that this is not a program that's solely for clubs in the Portland area. Just because we make the eyeglasses in Portland doesn't mean it's only for Portland area clubs. We work with Bend, we work with Central Lions Club, Central Lynn, Lakeview, um, we work with uh, Crooked River Ranch. Uh, we're all over the state. We're slowly going to take over the whole state, and we want to start dabbling in Washington and Idaho and California eventually. We'll get there, I think. <laughs> but um, that's our so goal. Like we said, always we brainstorm. <laughs> like I, I said, to Katie, Katie, I'm like, let's go to another state. <laughs> <laughs> We're branching out. Um, the exam fee is paid um, 
by the Lions Club to the provider. And like I said, that's negotiate, negotiated between the club and the provider. I stay out of it, but I like to plug that some providers give free exams and some of them heavily discount it. Um, and some, if they're in an area, we, um, we know that they just do what they can. If they're in a real rural area, um, sometimes they can't heavily discount their exam fee. And um, one thing that's really great too is that a lot of our providers that we work with, um, they will look up the insurance for a person and a lot of times they're covered under medical to get an exam covered. So that's pretty awesome too. Sometimes the Lions Club doesn't even have to pay for the exam as long as the provider is taking that step to check their insurance coverage. The eyeglasses, like Kelly mentioned, are $30, $40, or $50 or more if there's a medical need. Um, our foundation, our Lions Foundation, will bill the Lions Club. We'll send you an invoice on a monthly basis that lists out all of the clients that we made eyeglasses for. It might be 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50. Tallies that up, and then each month you guys, your club would just send in a check for that amount. Um, and then the uh, client also, um, when they go in for their exam and get fitted for eyeglasses, they are responsible to pay the provider a $20 fitting fee. And this is this was new to us in the beginning when Kelly and I um, built this whole program. Um, we were really hesitant on introducing that because we're like. The clubs are so used to giving things away for free. But what we found, um, I used to um, take a lot of the phone calls, um, the referral calls. I'd listen to the referrals that would come in. And it broke my heart when we get a message from, this is before the leap lab, we'd get a message from someone saying, the Lions Club just got my eyeglasses and I lost them, or they broke, or they were in my backpack and I left my backpack on the bus. And I know things happen. But when I would hear those messages over and over again, knowing how hard Lions Clubs fundraise to provide eyeglasses for people in need, I I just think it's really sad that people, you know, didn't think that those eyeglasses were so precious and, you know, held on to and I know like we've worked with homeless people that, you know, they're sleeping on the street. Things happen and we work with that. Um, but we implemented that $20 fitting fee with the hope that people would be a little bit more responsible and they'd have an investment in their health care and vision and um, maybe they'll be a little bit more responsible with their eyeglasses. And I'd like to say that I believe those calls about broken or lost um, eyelashes that were received through the Lions Club have gone down. So I think that's great. So that's kind of just a really quick nutshell shell um, of how you can start with us. Basically, it's calling or emailing me, Katie Torkerson. We'll give you my contact information at the end, whether you're a club or a provider. Reach out to me and say, hey, I just want to learn a little bit more. I want to get the details. Um, I'm happy to share all of that with you, but um, just you got to give me a call. I, I do my best um, to touch base with Lions Club, whether they're using our club or not. Um, I'm always interested to hear um, what Lions Club are doing to serve people in their community and their vision needs. Um, we don't force clubs to use us. We merely really are just a tool for you guys. Um, we, we're here to answer questions. I know that there might be more inexpensive ways to serve people that is better for your club, and that's awesome. Keep doing that. I know I won't tell you which club and which provider, but they were getting free glasses and free exams from a provider and they're like, yeah, we don't want to, I'm like, yeah, you keep doing that. What's better than free? <laughs> so um, reach out to me if you want to learn more or want to get connected with a provider in your area to use our Leap Optical Lab. And Katie is, um, she's very, very good at what she does. Katie is phenomenal. I love to listen to her outreach to clubs. She's compassionate. She's wonderful. She's so great with our providers. Um, we've had clubs who were really scared. They, they, they didn't want to upset their optometrist by approaching them and asking about the program. And Katie is so amazing when she reaches out to them because she also lets the optometrist know this is just an option. And um, we've gone and actually sat down with different providers over time. And we've had people say to us, well, gosh, actually, this is easier for our staff because the glasses are limited you're taking care of the edging and the checking and the warranty. You're not, I'm not having to pay a lab and do all these things, but um, Katie is just phenomenal 
in our in our culture at our job we like to roar for people for good things and just want you to I'm roaring for you because you're just so good at your job um so please reach out to katie because she's amazing and she'll help you out a lot thanks kelly oh, yes. katie, you're welcome <laughs> So now that you've gotten a really quick overview on LEAP, I hope it wasn't too much information. I hope we didn't babble on too much. Um, but if you want any more details or just want me to more clearly explain to you how it works, please email me or call and I'm happy to do so. I have all the time in the world right now. So now's your chance. Now's your chance. Um, but I want to talk to you quickly about what our response is to the pandemic that our world is experiencing right now. Um, we are the foundation, the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation stance is that we want to continue to flatten the curve, and that means um, social distancing. So it's really hard to maintain social distancing when you are fitting somebody for eyeglasses or you're receiving donations um, of eyeglasses. Um, so we decided to close our doors to the public. We do have staff going in a couple of days a week to take care of the necessary things, such as taking mail. Um, if you see in this slide, there's a cute little orange mailbox that is now permanently installed. So um, our mail room can still deliver mail to us. Our labs where we order lenses from can still deliver lenses. We can still accept eyeglass donations. And Sammy, our lead optician, she goes in three times a week. Um, she goes in, she checks the mail, she checks lenses in because believe it or not, there are still a few um, doctors throughout the state that are doing um, some routine eye care. And so we are receiving um, probably about five or six orders a week for our LEAP recipients. And Sammy is going in three days a week, making sure that those glasses are getting ordered and made and out the door. And um, in that cute little picture of her, she's wearing her mask. Um, I want to just give a plug to a um, video that she shared uh, or that the foundation um, shared on our Facebook page. If you want to check that out, it's Sammy in the lab reporting about um, what, uh, how we're still able to continue providing the gift of sight for people. And like I said, glasses are still going out the door um, on a much smaller scale. Um, I just want to also share with you that we recently made seven pairs of eyeglasses for an event um, that KCI Institute did. Um, it was a really small one, um, but we were able to make the lenses and get them out the door within five days um, to those people. Um, we're able to do it um, at a quicker turnaround because our volume right now is a lot smaller. Um, typically, it takes about two to four weeks to get eyeglasses um, made and out the door to our providers. Uh, we also recently, um, we got a phone call through a referral from a gentleman that is a truck driver and he is, his, his the only pair of glasses he has right now are sunglasses and he, a lot of his routes, he's driving in the night, you know, all night long and so he can't see very well. I mean, imagine driving in the night with sunglasses and that's his only prescription pair. Um, so he called us asking for help, and I think he's out in Georgia or Florida right now, And um, he, but he's from Oregon, and he was uh, connected with Central City Concern, who's able to pay for his eyeglasses, and they called us. We got his prescription and his um, pupillary distance. There are some basic measurements that we need. We did make him a pair of eyeglasses. Um, we actually made those sunglasses for him. Um, so we had the, the measurements that we needed. And so we were able to make those. And I think that they are due to be finished um, tomorrow, if not Monday. And once they're done, um, his trucking company is going to put him on a route back to Oregon to connect us with us to get those glasses to him. So that's how we're able to continue um, keeping the promise to Helen Keller were nights of the blind, were nights of the blind of the blind in the night <laughs> for poor Amos driving his truck. Poor so um, <laughs> so we're, we're just really thrilled that we're still able to do that from home. Many of us are working on a lot of projects um, right now. We're gonna talk about that. But if you have clients with needs, if they have broken eyeglasses, reach out to us. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's a limit to what we can do and how we can help people, but 
um, we will make every effort possible to make sure that people aren't walking around unable to see right now. So, what are you doing with those requests that are coming in? I'm gonna let Kelly take it from here. So we've gotten, you know, as Katie said, all of us down at the foundation are still working. We're all just remote. And if we have any staff that have to go into the office, we're taking precautions. Um, because we're located in a legacy systems building, um, they have to have their temperature taken to get down there. Just We're just trying to help flatten that curve. But we've had some clubs say, well, I don't, I don't know what to do with these things. So we just have some ideas um, what you could do. The first one is, is, is consider reaching out to your provider. Um, so many of the providers out there right now have had to stop. They're only seeing emergent situations. Um, I know a lot of them are still working. They're going in a couple hours a week. They're catching up on paperwork, bills, billing, different things like that. But this is a really great opportunity to contact your provider to find out their status. That way you know. Um, they might say, our, our plan is to reopen roughly here or, um, or what's going on. But that way you know too, if you end up getting an emergent situation, you can contact them. Um, I would also work with your provider to see what they want the transition back to our new normal to be. Because a lot of these providers out there, they are on a skeleton crew right now, or they have had to furlough their staff. So when they are allowed to get up and going again, I think what we're seeing on all these webinars and forums that we're on is that all of these ODs are really eager to see like, what is this gonna look like? It's gonna take longer to do exams because of more measures. And they might in the very beginning say to you, you know what, I, I have to hold off on my charitable or my, my reduced rate or give me two months or I can only see one person a week right now. And that's completely OK. We want to also, you know, we're in a partnership with them. Your club is in you. So this is just a really great chance to touch base to say, hey, what, what does this look like for you? How would you like to proceed? Um, I think it's also we've talked about a really great time that you might have clients out there that have applied or you're waiting the status or they're waiting for an application is to send a letter out, make a letter from your club about what's going on once you get that information. If you have a provider that was used to seeing people three times, three people a week, and now they have to go down to one a week, your wait list is going to be a little bit longer until they're able to kind of iron all of this out. So that's a good opportunity to reach out to the people on your wait list just to tell them, you know, because of this pandemic, we're having to go a little bit slower. We appreciate your patience. I think people are a lot more understanding when they kind of know what's going on, or they might know that this is going to take a little bit of extra time. Um, with that, and um, if you get people with broken frames, which happens, I know a lot of times because our clients are going into the provider to get fitted, they might go back there directly. But some sight and hearing chairs give out their phone number or their email address, or you might get a, a you know an inquiry and say, gosh, my frame is broken. Please, please, please don't just send them to the provider because right now they might not be open. There, a lot of them are working very reduced hours, but they're on skeleton crews, or they're only allowing people in for emergencies, like foreign bodies in the eye. Um, call the provider and ask if they can handle it, and then tell the client the hours that they're open. Um, you don't want to upset somebody because they maybe take three buses to get down somewhere, and then they realize they're not open. But if they can't help, please reach out to us. As Katie said, we're, we're pretty creative. We're pretty scrappy with figuring out how to make sure everybody has their services. I mean, now we got this trucker coming all the way across the country. We should make like a little map of America with like, where's Amos? <laughs> he's getting back to us. But um, you know, Doug right now is like writing that down because he's gonna follow Amos's story. But um, we can send out frames. if. If some people, if they're plastic, it's just snapping the lenses in, we'd be more than happy to send the frame to the to the recipient and see if they wanna do it. If they're in Portland Metro and they wanna to come to our office, as long as we can schedule it, you know, they could come and drop it in our adorable orange mailbox that Katie found us, and then we can come get it, fix it, and they wait outside and we can pass it back off as long as we're within those six feet of safety. So please reach out to us with any anything that you have like that, because we want to make sure that you're being supported, 
that your clients are being supported. We want to make sure that you're reaching out to your provider to see how you can support your provider during this because this is really, really hard on them too. Um, now we just, before we kind of talk about other ideas of what you can do other than the request, we want to show you another poll because we're pretty excited about these polls. So this is going to be a poll. We're just curious what people are doing during COVID right now. So Brenda or Vanna here is going to pop that up. So if you can just take a second, if you want to tell us if you're putting your service work aside and enjoying the beautiful weather. That might have been more applicable yesterday, two days ago, but um, nothing that you're bored and you need work to do. You're still in processing requests and engaging in club activities, or you're just living life as usual. So we'll give you, we have about 9% of you have voted. Give you guys another. We'll give you guys about 10 more seconds. We're at a 53% vote rate. I know we can get higher than that. Oh, 57. Okay. So the poll is closed. 57 of you vote, 57% of you voted. So it looks like 56% of you are still processing requests and engaging in club activities, which is amazing that's that's why we're all lions it's what we love to do it uh, looks like 26 percent of you are living life as usual 15 percent of you are putting aside service work and you're enjoying the weather and four percent of you are bored and you need work to do so those four percent of you call us because you can volunteer for the foundation we would love to have you help us with stuff um, but what we want to do is we want to kind of go over some things that we were brainstorming that you guys can do right now, whether you're bored or you're still engaging in social activities with your club. Um, so Katie and I are just going to kind of go over this list for you. It's the next slide. I mentioned earlier that uh, this is a beautiful time for us to be able to take care of all of those tasks that we never have time to do. When Kelly and I started this lab uh, six years ago, um, I can't tell you how many times we've said, and we were on it, we were serious. We're like, oh, when things slow down, we'll do X, Y, and Z. Well, things never slow down for us, which is awesome. That's why we love our job and we, you know, we love what we do. But now is our time, things have slowed down. So we're able to tackle some of those things that um, will just make our life a lot easier and a lot more seamless once we are back in the office and um, back to our new normal. Uh, one thing that we are doing is um, we are scan Sammy um, and Yvette, our opticians are at home. They are scanning all of our orders for I Promise Optical and Leap. Um, the paperwork we've had um, files and files and files of everybody's um, prescriptions and stuff and they are securely scanning them into a database so that we can access files electronically um, i can't tell you how many times we've looked for a paper order form and we can't find it because it was uh, the staple got stuck to another staple and it's in district o and it should have been in district d or um, the l's are mixed in with the o's and so um, electronic filing is amazing. So as you as lions or providers or whatever, I highly encourage you to look at your um, organization right now and um, see what you might be able to do to make things a little bit easier um, so that you can access things more readily. Um, uh, so what you can be doing is learning more about the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation service program. Um, we've mentioned that we've got our Roar Hearing Aid program, which is ever evolving, it's changing all the time. Um, there is a webinar coming up on that, um, but I encourage you to learn a little bit about it before you jump into the webinar so that um, you have a little bit of background knowledge. Um, same with all of our other programs like uh, patient care, mission cataract. Um, we, you know, our MHSP, or, or I don't think we call it that anymore, our school screening program um, that is um, changing as well. So just get up to date on our program, um, how we're able to serve your Lions Club and your community members, um, just so that um, you're up to date with everything. And then once we're back and driving like 
um, normal, then you'll have a better knowledge of our program. I encourage you too to reach out to our staff. Um, all of us are available by phone or by email. Um, just reach out to us if you just want somebody to talk to. I know it can be really um, lonely and no, I don't know what it's like because I have a six month old. Um, and if you haven't heard him, he's, um, it's, you haven't been hearing him, probably you've been hearing my husband. He likes to talk like Mickey Mouse to him. Um, but. <laughs> We're all working from home, so if you're bored and want someone to talk to, call us, or if you have um, any questions about our program, we're happy and we're right here with you um, to go over that. We can set up go-to meetings one-on-one -on -one with Lions Clubs or providers, with anybody. Um, we've gotten really savvy with these go-to meetings, so um, we love doing them. So we like to see your faces, too. I'm sure you're tired of looking at mine and Kelly's. <laughs> You want to take the next one, Kelly? Sure. Um, we kind of hit upon this on the previous slide. This is a perfect opportunity to reach out to your applicants and follow up. Sometimes we all know things get busy. You send out an application and then you're not getting it back or it's, it's kind of in limbo. This is a great time to just follow up to get that all organized, figure out what your provider wants to do um, so that you kind of have a good game plan because you guys are a team. Um, this is a really great time again to check in with the providers. We want to, you know, we want to talk about what we can do to support them as well. Partner with other Lions Clubs. Um, if we have doctors, I think we do have a doctor on here. I think it's Dr. Lisa Jones is on here from Old Part. Um, this is a great time if you're if you're listening to this and you're like, gosh, I think I can give more. I want to do more. We would love to have you as elite provider. We will find a club. We've done that before. We've had providers find us and then we find a club for them. Usually it's the other way around, but we get really excited when it's that way. Um, community partner appreciation. This is a big one that, that we're taking on right now. I think um, Years ago, I took a call when we were partnering with a very large chain and they were very frustrated and very angry and they felt that a lot of the applicant or the recipients that were coming in were very ungrateful and very challenging people, which can happen, especially when you're dealing with low income. There, a lot of people are struggling. But one of the things that she said to me that was very poignant is she said, no one ever even says thank you. We, we agreed to this and then after we said we would help you guys, I never heard from another lion again. I just get things to do and it it was like wow gosh I'm really sorry we you should do better about that this is a really great time to show your appreciation to your community partners you work with um, our staff right now we are handwriting thank you cards to every single one of our lead providers just to send out to them to say thank you thank you for servicing our alliance clients thank you for working with them thank you for all that you do everybody loves to get nice mail Everybody loves to get things in the mail that aren't bills or telemarketing stuff. And it's just that opportunity of a nice handwritten note, or if you can't do a handwritten note, even an email where you can say, hey, I, I, I really appreciate what you do for our club or our community. Um, I really, we, we really encourage you to just take a minute to say thank you. Um, we even took it a step farther and we um, we're sending out little little things to our reps that we work with. We have all these amazing lens reps and frame reps in our labs that do so much for us when, when we call and we say, I have a crisis, I have a person that cannot see, I need these lenses in two days, which is not normal. I can't tell you how many times they've come through for us. Um, we have an employee drive over and pick up lenses. So we just wanted to show them too, because this is a really tough time for a lot of businesses out there. And just that appreciation goes really far. Um, Katie, do you want to talk about testimonies? Testimonies, what we mean by that is um, reaching out to some previous clients that you've helped and just um, see how they're doing with their eyeglasses or their hearing aids, their surgeries that they had, any service that the foundation has provided for people, just follow up with them. Even if they got them six months ago, say, hey, how are you doing? I've got some downtime. I want to hear, you know, a testimony because we take those testimonies and that's how we're able to recruit new providers, recruit new donors. It's so, so important for us to um, take those um, testimonies so that we continue providing the gift of sight for people. 
Um, when we apply for grants, we need those testimonies. So if there's one thing you can do for us, it would be getting those stories um, from your recipients. And we'd like to hear from you of any ideas that you might have um, for some things that you could be doing from home. Feel free to um, send those ideas in the chat function. Um, we'll look over those and share those with our audience. And then in the meantime, we're gonna um, kind of wrap up here and answer any um, questions that you guys have, any burning questions. Um, I know we've gotten quite a few through and um, I'm gonna have Brenda pop on so that she can ask us some of those questions that you guys have sent us. And before Brenda does that, I just wanna share, I was telling Katie this um, this morning before the webinar, it was, it was this really awesome quote I just heard, and maybe you guys have heard it before, but it's so perfect for now. It's from Winston Churchill, and it's never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think it's all about how you choose to look at it, but these things we're doing, trying to, we, Katie and I keep trying to be very optimistic, and we're like, we can finally get things done that we've never had time to get done. We can get more organized, or we can say thank you to people and just be very mindful. So just try to use this opportunity to just not let this crisis go to waste and do all those things that you can do for your personal life and for your lion's life. This is so exciting. I just, I'm looking again at our attendees list and I see Dr. Lisa Jones from Devers. Um, she's joining us. So thank you so much for joining our webinar and learning more about our LEAP program. And thank you for your services that you provide for our people. We really, really appreciate you and all the other providers that work with us. Brenda. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Katie. It's... Hey, thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that we were able to do this today. Uh, one of the questions that we've received so far is from Susan Spanner. Thank you so much, Susan. She asks, is it possible to have one of you at with OLSHIF and with the LEAP program to visit the club site and hearing chairs to give a presentation at a meeting when we are doing that again and to visit optometrist office with the site and hearing chair committee members to help them with their connections with providers? Definitely, yes. Um, Kelly and I love going on road trips. Um, one of our favorite road trips, we have a few favorites, um, is one when we did go down to uh, Yaha and I believe Walport. Um, we met with um, a few optometrists and we like to um, use um, the foundation funds and time as best possible. So we'll try to group some Lions Club if they're far away, um, group them with others. So we're totally open to doing, um, um, where do they, the, uh, where they have the zone chair meetings. Um, we think it'd be really neat if we can get involved in some zone chair meetings coming up um, so we can talk to larger groups at a time. Um, we've gone to Eastern Oregon on a road trip um, out to Hefner, um, Oregon. That was awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are totally open to coming and speaking at your club um, and visiting your optometrist. Just reach out to us. We're happy to do that. Okay, and one of our other questions is, if a nonprofit in the Portland area would like to learn how to apply for LEAP services for their clients, what's their first step? We do have a women's shelter that's expressing interest on behalf of their clients. That's a great question. So, um, like I said, we work with um, different organizations, such as the William Temple House, which is down the street from us. Um, we started that partnership um, probably about three or four years ago, and we, um, what they um, will just for, they they act just like a Lions Club basically. They're paying for the exam and they pay us for the eyeglasses, and we connect um, them with a, a um, an optometrist that's close in proximity to their organization. So um, we could just you know we'll look at it case by case basis. Um, if this shelter or organization um, is in an area where we already have a lead provider, we'll just connect them with that provider and. Um, make sure that they're able to refer people seamlessly and um, get their exams and eyeglasses done. And that's the questions we have now. I know so many of them have more questions, and I hope that they'll be able to email us either individually or I had popped up into the chat that our general email address is info at ol shf.org or you can give us a call and leave a message right now either for Katie there on the number on your screen or if you'd like to call our main line we're at 503-413-7399 go ahead and leave us a message and we are returning call and also just really quick 
like I see um, Dr. Dr. Lisa Jones says providers love public callouts too. So you know, gratitude going on Facebook and saying thank you, you know, Dr. Jones, or thank you, you know, Vision Family Clinic, just to to show because I think that sometimes people pick providers based on what good they do for the community as well. If we don't have any more questions, we're going to take this time to wrap up. Um, there's a really wonderful quote by Helen Keller on there. I am the only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I cannot do. Um, that is, I think that's really important for a time like this for us just to remember that, that, um, you know, we're here for each other. We're a community. Um, we are doing what we can to continue providing for people and serve. I know that's what, you know, like Kelly mentioned, um, I mean, we have hearts of lions. You know, we're here to help people. All of our providers have hearts of lions and we just want to continue serving the best way that we can. And it's going to be on a different, um, a different platform, um, possibly. You never know what, you know, our future holds for us, but we're doing what we can to help people. Um, and then also, I just want to let you guys know that there will be a brief survey going out to you after this webinar um, by email. Um, so if you would just take a moment to um, take that survey so that we can make sure that our webinars are better suited for you guys in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you both you so all. much for doing that. And this is Brenda again. I just want to give a quick plug out to checking out our Facebook page. Uh, Facebook, look up for OLSHF or Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. We do have more of these webinars coming up each Thursday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we hope you'll join us in the future. Please register through the Facebook or through the emails that we'll be sending out. Thank you again, Katie and Kelly.